Hi, I'm Justin McLeod, Community Relations Coordinator for Roanoke City Public Schools. This month, we'll introduce you to a teacher who's become famous for his raps. We'll preview the new Fallon Park Elementary, and we'll also give you the details about a major fundraiser that will help our homeless students. That and a whole lot more in this month's show. We're excited to announce that the Star Council is holding the second annual Breakfast with Santa mm -hmm. coming up on December 2nd. That is a Saturday. And here to talk about it is Kathy Duncan. She is the Career and Technical Education Director, but she's also an advisor to the Star Council. Uh, this is a very important group, but uh, a lot of people have heard of the Star Council. But in case you've forgotten, remind us what the Star Council is all about. Uh, the Star Council, a group of students from Patrick Henry and William Fleming High Schools that collaborate together. They're called the Star Council for Students Taking Action in Roanoke. And boy, have they taken action these last few years. And their whole purpose, or the group's whole purpose, is to help our homeless students and talk about the reaction and the community involvement over the last couple of years. It's been absolutely overwhelming, the reaction has. It's really brought this community together, and it's really brought the student bodies of both schools together. For them to work for a common purpose to help their homeless peers has uh, been so inspirational. I mean, they've raised money, they've raised awareness, and it's really had a positive impact. The breakfast was our first year. We didn't really know what to expect, and right. how did it go in your mind? It went really, really well. We won't tell who Santa was. <laughs> it's a it's a it's a kept well kept secret, it is, right? Yeah. It is. But uh, it was great to see the community come together, and several thousand dollars were raised uh, from that event. I mean, Absolutely. what can we expect this year? I'm hoping to double that amount that we raised last year. I think it was somewhere in the neighborhood of close to five thousand well dollars, and I'm five, yeah. and I really hope that we double that this year. Come on out on December the second um, to help the homeless pancake breakfast at William Fleming High School starting at eight thirty a.m. Get your tummies all full before you go uh, Christmas shopping, and you're, it will be money well spent. And bring the whole family. It's going to be a reasonable price, and all that money, one hundred percent of it, goes to help the homeless students of. City Public Schools. Um, the money that we've raised has made a huge difference. Yes. Um, do the students that you interact with, do they realize the impact that they've had with the work that they've done? And I do think that they have, but they also have a sense that while we still have quite a number of homeless students, their work isn't done, so they're not going to stop until we have zero students homeless in Roanoke City. The event is fun because Santa shows up, you can have a picture with Santa, there's also musical groups that perform, um, you know, and Sodexo Magic, we can... We cannot thank them enough, yeah. they're awesome. Um, they, um, the company has all the food donated by vendors, so a hundred percent of what is donated mm -hmm. goes to help the students and the great thing about this program um, is there really are no administrative costs None. there's no overhead so that the money you donate if you donate five dollars or ten dollars uh, really that money goes to the students and maybe if you could just share some of the the money that we've spent to help our students i know coats and you know, taking care of needs, right? Absolutely. If we find and identify a need to help a student, we do. Um, we've been giving coats out this the last couple of weeks. It's been a little chilly, and we've been giving, giving coats and gloves out. I know that we've assisted with other things through Roanoke intake and things of this nature. But um, I, I just think the most important significant part of this are it's students helping students, students collaborating together to help their peers and to raise awareness. I don't think that the citizens of the Roanoke Valley really realized what kind of a problem um, that it has been and a challenge that it is. Um, and in, in these cold weather months we are just hoping and praying that we have no additional students go homeless. And when, this, when the Star Council started we were seeing about 604 homeless mm -hmm. students a year Two years later, to give you an idea of the impact that their work has had, the students' work, that number ended this past school year at 488, which is a huge 
uh, undertaking. Um, it's a great you know, impact that they're having, but I think there's an acknowledgement we still have some work to do. It is, and it's to the season to help others. So if you can come out, the food is fabulous, and come out and support Star Council and the help the homeless students of Roanoke City Public Schools. Okay, so this is Saturday, December 2nd. Mm -hmm. Uh, it, take it takes place at William Fleming High School. Mm -hmm. uh, it's priced to sell. I think it's $5 for children under 18, mm -hmm. um, $7 for adults, and a family of four can come in uh, for $20. Um, it's great we deal. just want folks to come in. Yeah. We'll feed you. There'll be plenty of food. We'll accept cash. Um, as well as check, just make uh, the checks out to Roanoke City Public Schools. So we'll see you there. 8.30 in the morning, 8.30, be there. We'll see you there. And yep. I know your culinary arts students will be help serving, Absolutely. correct? Absolutely, yes, so, they will. Right. It'll be a fun uh, morning. It'll and, be fantastic. And hope to see you there. Saturday, December 2nd, uh, Breakfast with Santa. Thank you, Miss Duncan, and Thank we'll see you. you then, okay? All right, we'll be right back. There's a myth out there that somebody who's using drugs is engaged in a selfish habit, that they're not hurting anybody, and I can say that's um, not true at all. Every drug user has somebody that they've hurt, that they've not been there for because they're under the influence, or they're using their time and money to obtain drugs. I see a lot of people in the probation office who steal from family members, steal from friends and businesses, so I can truly say that, that a drug addiction and drug habit hurts everybody. We're here today at James Madison Middle School meeting with Cole Wilder. He is an eighth grade teacher who has become sort of a YouTube a sensation. A little bit of a viral sensation. For your <laughs> rap video. Mm -hmm. So you're going to have to explain this. How did this come about? Well, I, start, when I, I started off in history, what, seven years ago now. And um, when I was in middle school, I'm from Withville, Virginia. And in middle school, I had a, a sixth grade teacher who used to bring his guitar and do country songs. So when I first got the job here, uh, I was a little bit overwhelmed in my first year, and I, I just remembered his songs, and I said, what if I can put all that, you know, SO information we have to cover into a rap song? And so I started with one. I didn't plan on keeping it going. Um, I think the first one I did was on geography, and I just went through the states, the major manufacturing areas, and it just kind of took off from there. I did a World War II one, Civil War, and then when I moved to English, just kept it going. So does this come naturally to you? I mean, you're actually <laughs> writing the lyrics, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah. how difficult is uh, that? Well, I'm definitely not a professional rapper. Sure, okay. Um, so if you listen to my songs, you know, they're not, you know, as far as the rapping skills, I don't think it's, it's not great. It's pretty good, though. Um, but I, since I am an English teacher, I am a pretty good writer. So really all, all writing a rap song is is poetry. Um, so I just find an instrumental that's kind of catchy among the kids and uh, sit down and start writing and so for instance um, like it, in the song we just did I rap about pronouns and antecedents pronouns have antecedents and they must have agreements and right there I think antecedent agreement and so I make a line where I put antecedent and agreement and so when I'm writing the the lines I try to put the major information as the rhyme because that's that's kind of what they remember um, so I've probably gotten a little better, you know, I'm still, I haven't got any calls for any major studios yet, but um, I, think, I think they're pretty good. So how is this helping your students learn? Okay, um, number one is it makes the classroom fun. Um, and, you know, teachers all across the country use rap songs, but a lot of them will do it where they'll just play it and that's kind of their lesson. For us, that's just, you know, five, ten minutes at the beginning of the class to get the interest. Um, so what happens is it, it builds excitement. I mean. If, if I'm just going to come in and say, today we're talking about pronouns and how they agree with their antecedents, you know, there's not going to be a lot of excitement over that. So instead, we build the excitement um, with the song, and then all the, you know, with grammar, you have a lot of rules. You know, like if you start with a subordinating conjunction, you have to have a comma later on in the middle. Um, so that's one of the, the, the rap lines, and it's kind of catchy, so they remember it. So when they're writing, and they notice they start a sentence with a subordinating conjunction, boom. They, I've even seen some of them write in their essays that will say the line you know, in their head. So you can see clicking. You, Absolutely, you yeah. You can see where mm -hmm. it's actually and, working. And sometimes, not so much with English, but back in history, I remember we'd be give, taking a quiz and I'd see kids kind of, I'm like, keep it down over there, you know. Sing it in your head, not out loud. <laughs> so the latest video, to me watching it, looks mm -hmm. like it was done all in one take. It I mean, was, did, yeah. So what, but behind the scenes, what did uh -huh. it take to get there? How much preparation well, and... It was all student ideas. And I'm not, if you're familiar with lip dubs, um, where they go through the school and yeah. they sing popular songs, we wanted that style. So we, uh, I, the song was five minutes, so I just kind of timed out a five minute route throughout the school. 
and you know I sent home permission forms and we had 80 kids sign up um, to be in the video so we had to find a spot for 80 kids and you know I was like think of the craziest thing you can do in this spot in the school and um, it's very difficult because like one kid had he bowled a strike and if the kid doesn't bowl the strike you know the scene doesn't work um, so we, we had a practice day and sure enough when the real day hit we nailed it so I mean, it was well there's also a part in the where you're free throwing it here at the basketball. Oh, yeah. I mean, how'd you get he nailed that in one take too? Well, I mean, former college basketball player. Okay. I'm not I still can't play defense, still can't jump, but I can I can still shoot it pretty good. So it was a lot of luck that it all came together yeah. in one take. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so. absolutely. All right, where do you go from here? I mean, this is the talk of the school. Mm -hmm. I know a lot of people see you online. You continue doing these rap videos. Yeah, absolutely. We'll probably um probably won't do any more this semester, but when we get back, you know, after winter break, um, I'll probably look at uh, you know some, I don't know what it'll be, whatever students seem they're a little behind with, we'll do a rap song in that, and uh, we'll probably do another video and build some more excitement, you know, and keep it going. You know, it's, it, it, it's a big time commitment, so more than, you know, two or three a year, and, you know, uh, I don't know if I could do that, but we're, we're definitely going to keep it going. And we should mention these are shot after school, not All after the school, school, yeah. So. But mm -hmm. um, I know you hear the reaction from the, the faculty as well as students, mm -hmm. but I, I'm curious, what is the reaction, if any, from parents about these videos? Oh, the parents, the parents love it. We just had a cross-country meet yesterday, um, and they're coming up, and, you know, some of them are saying, I didn't even, you know, I'm, I've been out of school for 20 years, but I know how to use commas again. So um, they're, they're, they're loving it because their kids are at home, and even though they don't know they're really studying, when they're watching that video, listening to the words, they're studying, so the parents are... Uh, they're loving it. Some of them have even been asked to be in the video, but that's going to be just students. Okay, that's how I was going to end this interview. Is there any chance I could have a cameo in the future? I mean, if you want a spot, if, if we do another one that style, you could, I mean, okay. you could well, hop could in be somewhere. could sneak in. Absolutely. All right. Well, kind of like a Where's Waldo, find McLeod in the crowd. Yeah, you? we'll look See, forward to that. You right? McLeod in the crowd, it's just natural, natural rapping skills. See, you have a lot more talent than I, I do, absolutely. so congratulations. <laughs> Thank you. Hey, it's all about reaching the, the mm -hmm. students, and it's something that you're very passionate about. Absolutely. It's obviously, it's working, mm -hmm. so congratulations. Thank you, I appreciate it. Okay, and we'll be right back. Confused when you're using them commas, no problem. Hear me, I put commas in between items in the series. Forget a comma with me, and you might start drama with me. So you started out with a subordinate conjunction Just put a comma in the middle, it ain't nothing A comma, mama, is what we used to show pauses Before a fanboy, when you combine two clauses I'm positive, in a positive, needs a comma to Disagree, who are you, after transitions to Man, this ain't new to me Is it new to you, don't forget cities and states and dates too uh, Man, I'm feeling it, uh, man, I'm feeling it Feel the momentum building, about to go through the ceiling This grandma rap, can you hand Handle that. It's the writing rap part two. Hat. Grandma, grandma, every day. Straight A's on every grade. Right? It's too easy for me. It's too easy for you. So what you wanna do? It's the writing rap part two. Hat. Grandma, grandma, every day. Straight A's on every grade. Right? It's too easy for me. It's too easy for you. So what you wanna do? It's the writing rap part two. Hat. When you use a quotation, you gotta have a to say phrase. You can use a to say phrase in one of three ways. You can put it at the beginning, the middle, or the end. Mr. Water, all I do is win, win, win. Better believe it. If I say it, then I mean it. Pronouns have antecedents and they must have agreement. Same thing with the subject, same thing with the verb. Is it singular or plural? Just look at the words. Look at me now. YouTube celebrity haters just jealous cause I'm in a spot that don't never be rambling, never me. I use sentences with clarity. Apparently my students' parents want my CD. 
No guessing when we testing our missions to be the best in success And nothing less, we ain't stopping until it's checked I mean, what did you expect? You're dealing with the Grandma King Chilling on my throne, listen to my fans sing Grandma, Grandma, every day, straight A's on every grade Right, it's too easy for me, it's too easy for you So what you wanna do? It's the writing rap part two Ha! Grandma, grandma, every day, straight A's on every grade. Writing's too easy for me, it's too easy for you. So what you wanna do? It's the writing rap part two. Ha. Critics say the writing rap to his fire filled of flames. Can't touch me in a verb tense game. Past, present, or future, gotta keep it the same. If you start with one tense, be sure you don't change. I'm savage with this pad and pen. Y'all average and I'm better than any other rapper that has ever lived. Gotta learn all the commonly misspelled words like to and there and through and where and are and you're, etc. The best teacher rapping in all of America. Competition, I ain't scared of ya. Mass hysteria follows me in every area. From the gymnasium to the cafeteria. Apostrophes, they show possession. Plural ending, let's put it on the end. Then I killed it from the beginning to the ending. Best rapper living, giving you writing tips. Just listen and write them down. Grandma, grandma, every day. Straight A's on every grade. Writing's too easy for me, it's too easy for you. So what you wanna do? It's the writing rap part two. Ha! Grandma, grandma, every day, straight A's on every grade. Right, it's too easy for me, it's too easy for you. So what you wanna do? It's the write and rap part two. Ha. It's too easy, it's too easy. This write and rap thing is too easy. It's too easy, it's too easy. This write and rap thing is too easy. Better believe me, this thing is too easy. This write and rap thing is too easy. It's too easy. Better believe me. This right and rap thing is too easy. Look, we know how to use commas with fanboys, with subordinate conjunctions. We know how to put commas with items in a series. We know how to find the antecedent and choose the correct pronoun. We know how to make sure the subject and the verb agree. We keep the same verb tense when we write. We know how to show possession using apostrophes. We know how to use commas and quotation marks to show dialogue. We revise sentences for clarity. We don't ramble. This write and rap thing is too easy, people. This write and rap thing is too easy. It's too easy. It's too easy. This write and rap thing is too easy. It's too easy. It's too easy. This write and rap thing is too easy. Did you know that it takes 12 to 20 years for a cigarette butt to decompose? Cigarette butts thrown on the ground or out the window are litter, and most wash into our waterways, polluting streams, and harming stream life. Cigarette butts can also be a fire hazard. Extinguish cigarette butts in ash cans and ash trays. Litter is preventable, so remember, no ifs, ands, or buts. Don't litter. This fall, every student here at Wasina Elementary is heading to the neighborhood library. And here to talk about it is Miss Nicholas. She is a uh, teacher, kindergarten teacher here at Wasina, as well as Mr. Burton, who's the proud principal. So you're heading to the library. How did this all come about? Why don't you start us? Certainly. Um, I would say it was a, a brainchild, if you will, of myself and a very close friend, a retired librarian here at Wasina, Jane Field. We were talking about taking a whole class to the library. And I had said how being so close to Raleigh Court Public Library, a walking field trip with my kindergarten class, I've always wanted to do that. And it just went from there to let's contact Josh. And it went from preschool to fifth grade and now we've all gone and gotten our library cards. And I know, Mr. Burton, you guys, uh, the school, did a actual survey and found a lot of your students don't ha did not have a library card, correct? That is correct. Last year we did a little bit of an informal survey and we were shocked to find out how many students did not have a library card. So when they're going to the library, what exactly are your students doing? Well, our goal is to establish lifelong readers. If they're lifelong readers, they will be lifelong learners. So when they arrive, there is a tour of the library. Just what does the public library have to offer? Then uh, they also had a craft for them to do. 
Um, they read stories to the lower grades. They presented them with their cards, which was very exciting. And the children were allowed to check out books. And we let each child have their own personal library book bag that we attached their cards to. And when they came back to Wasina, then we had a celebration for our cards. And now we're just hoping that they'll all go back and make this part of their family's routine. And pick up on that, Mr. Burton. I mean, there's a parental piece. You hope that the students will go home and say, Mom, Dad, take me to the library, right? Oh, absolutely. And that was one of the key parts is not only in the future, but during the field trips, we actually had parents come and attend the field trip with them. We encouraged it. Um, we had a, a slew of parents, oh, I yes. feel like, attend the field trips. And we're going to continue the outreach with the parents and with the community on throughout the year, even after the field trips. Uh, we have several we, library we have several night plans. Nights. We had one last week where we invited all the students and their families uh, to come and wear their costumes and come read with a Wasina staff member. And it was great fun. We had about 45 in attendance. We're going to have one November 21st, and we're hoping to even have more to come and just, like I said, make that part of the family routine to start going to the library. What's been the reaction of students and parents about getting the library card? I mean, I remember getting mine as a, as a kid. It was kind of a big deal, right? Is it still that way? It, it's been very positive, but I think it's also been surprising for the parent because a couple of parents have said, never even thought about it. I forgot about that. And I can kind of understand as a parent myself, you don't really think of it. Luckily, I'm in the school, so I know that it's important to be a reader and to, you know, to go to the library on a regular basis. But a lot of parents forgot about it in their busy life. So that's one of the things that came to me and said was thank you for reminding them how important it is to get their kid in the library, especially a library that has so many resources and is so nice inside. And why is it important in your mind to start at the elementary level? Oh, just uh, particularly preschool, kindergarten, to make it, I keep using the word routine, but just make it part of your lives. This is what we do to become, you know, have text around us and to be immersed in literature and current events. And it's also a great community builder. Uh, Raleigh Court Public Library is right here in our community. and. There are so many resources, as, as Mr. Burton said, and programs that they have that are free for these children during the school year, during the summer. And if we start them young, when they're preschoolers and kindergartners, then it will just be part of their normal routine. And just introducing them to the resources that they have, the different books and the different selection they have, so they can choose a high interest book, high interest to them book, it becomes their habit and eventually they'll start to read to lead, hopefully, as they get to high school. And she referred to the community aspect of this. I mean, you wanted it to be the neighborhood library, correct? And why was that important? Because it's in our backyard. Many of our kids can walk to it on the weekends, in the summertime, and, you know, for the parents who may not have the ability to, may, may not have transportation, they're still able to get there because it's not that far down the road. Uh, is this a one-time deal, or are you guys uh, looking at expanding this, uh, become a tradition here? We are. What we're hoping, now that we have preschool through grade five already has their cards, next year we will target kindergarten and incoming preschool, and then new students that happen to move in and be sure that they get their library cards as well. Okay, well, so, yes, it's, it sounds like a worthwhile project that does definitely have a happy ending in many ways if exactly. we're going to take a book term. So congratulations. Thank you. Okay. Yes, we're very proud. Thank All you. right. And we'll be right back. This winter, there's going to be a lot more activity here at Fallon Park Elementary, and you could say a lot of excitement as well. Joining us today is Ms. Mitchum. She is the proud principal here at Fallon Park. Well, you're about to get a brand new state-of-the-art building. Yes. Uh, new school. New school that's going to be built around the current school. The faculty and staff, as well as the students and community, are very excited about this opportunity here. This is a school that's well over 40 years old. It's outlived its usefulness, let's put it that way. Is that correct? That is correct. We right now have the open classroom concept. Many of our classrooms do not have doors. 
Many of our classrooms do not have natural lighting, so with this new building, we're going to have the opportunity for doors, closed spaces, and natural lighting in every room. What's it like with that open floor concept? It was an idea that sort of maybe was a good idea 40 years ago, but doesn't work? No, it doesn't. You know, we have students who uh, really like to do hands-on activities. That's how they learn best, and sometimes that can be a distraction to other students in the other spaces. And so by having those walls and those doors, I think we're just going to be able to encourage more hands-on activities in the classroom to flourish the learning that's already going on here at Fallon Park. As you mentioned, the school will be built behind the current facility. Correct. Uh, going to be much larger and even a two-story building, right? Tell us so, some of the features in the new building. Yes, we are going to have approximately five more additional classrooms. We are also going to have the gymnasium that will be closer to the front entrance and a separate entrance for the community. So the community is going to have the opportunity to rent out the building, have their own space to enter the school. So I'm glad that not only the students and staff are going to be able to use this new facility for learning, but the community is going to be able to celebrate the new building and use it as well. Okay, so as you know, there's always growing pain. So how are you sort of maneuvering with construction? I mean, it's essentially going to be happening behind you, but you, at times, you'll still hear things, right? Yeah, we may hear things. Um, the great thing about it being built behind us right now is instruction can, can continue as is. So right now there's very limited impact on the students and the instruction going on at Fallon Park. And this is something that's going to take probably two years to complete. To complete, yes. and I know you've had uh, the school system along with you have had several community meetings. What's what's the reaction of the folks who live here in Southeast? The community is very excited. They look at Fallon Park as kind of the beacon on the hill, and I think we're now going to be able to live up to that standard. And so they're very excited. They're always ask, continuing to ask questions, and we are continuing to keep them up to date. You sort of address this, but it's going to be like business as usual here at the school, right? I mean, you don't see any major disruption to what you guys, your mission here, right? Correct. No, not at this time. Um, the construction that will originally begin in 2018 will not impact the instruction at this time. And children and the flow of traffic will be able to run as usual. And help us out with the building itself. The second floor will essentially be academic? Yes, the second floor will be all academic um, with grades two through five, while the main floor will have our cafeteria, our media center, gym, music and art, and computer labs. And talk about the front of the school because that's something that really should be attractive to everyone who lives here in Southeast, correct? Yes, um, I'm very excited about the new entrance plan. We are really incorporating the park fill of Fallon Park, so we will now have a park-like entrance leading up to the main building. Um, the new structure of the main building is really going to put your focus up here to the school from the main street. Is there a particular, as you look at the plan, something that you're really looking forward to beyond something maybe a little bit different? Or? I, I'm looking forward to our new media center. I know that most people really remember the reading well here at Fallon Park in the media center. And now we're going to have a new concept that's going to be located in the corner with windows looking over the baseball fields of Fallon Park. So I'm looking forward to that new scenery that we're going to have in the building. Have you thought about at all, you know, because this place is full of history, incorporating some of the old in with the new, whether it's artifacts or something from when you built it the first time around? We haven't open. finalized those plans. Um, community neighborhoods have reached out wanting to possibly do some type of celebration before the new building opens up to recognize what Fallon Park was. And so we're definitely in the process of thinking about how we can incorporate the two together. Fallon Park is also known for their garden that they have in the yeah. center of the building. There will be a new courtyard in the center of the building for the playground equipment. And we're going to make sure that the garden is incorporated with the new school as well. So there will be sort of a new garden. It may not necessarily be in its current place, but the, the mission will remain there. Absolutely. I think that's crucial for our students here because so many interact with the garden on a daily basis for instruction. And I would imagine you're not going to miss the learning cottages, right? <laughs> no, not at all. I think we're all excited to get rid of the learning cottages and, and all be in the same building together as a community. Okay. Well, uh, wish you all the best. I know it's going to be sort of exciting time, but also at times going to be some growing pains, but I'm sure you guys will handle it well. Yes. And we look forward to it. We're up for the challenge and we're excited for this opportunity. Okay. And um, congratulations and we'll be right back. Okay? Thank you. That's this month's show. Before we go, we want to remind you about the Breakfast with Santa fundraiser. It takes place Saturday, December 2nd at William Fleming High School from 8.30 to 11.30 in the morning. 100% of the proceeds will benefit our homeless students. We'll see you again soon.